Welcome to Strip Cover Lit. I'm Dalton Gentry, and I'm here with a quickie. We're going to be doing a lot of quickies this week, so I hope you enjoy the format. Uh, this is Odd Thomas by Dean Koontz. Now, in a traditional quickie format here, we'll start from the very beginning of what is this? Uh, this was published in 2003 by Bantam. This is Dean Koontz's 446 page uh, in the mass market edition, New York Times bestseller. Uh, I, I usually give a lot of grief to Dean Koontz. I like to refer to him as the clearance rack Stephen King, but I'm not sure if that's fair. Uh, it's hard to compete with Stephen King, and this seems to be one of the biggest competitors in that genre. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about this book here. Uh, three great, great quotes from it. We always like to start with quotes. Uh, from time to time, I do consider that I might be mad. Like any self-respecting lunatic, however, I am always quick to dismiss any doubts about my sanity. So, what we have here that sets up, of course, the unreliable narrator, which we've talked about quite a bit on the channel recently, uh, but, but a great quote as well. Uh, it, it's very much uh, reminiscent of Kuntz's voice. Uh, another quote here, uh, We are not strangers to ourselves. We only try to be. Uh, I, I just like that one, so I'm going to throw it out there. Okay. Uh, and a third quote, alliteration seems to offend people. I like that. Uh, <laughs> there's a little bit of humor here. Oh, there's a lot of humor here in the Odd Thomas series. Uh, some of it seems a little try-hard, in my opinion, but uh, hey, I'll take a good quote like that any day. So let me sell Odd Thomas to you uh, with a sentence. This is a genre-spreading gut punch uh, that feels just as real as as it does not. Uh, this is a very bizarre piece about a fry cook who can basically see, communicate in a way with the dead. Uh, he hangs out with Elvis Presley, and as far-fetched as that is, there is some realism here, especially towards the end of this particular novel, uh, that makes it enjoyable, in a sense. A very good pop fiction read. Not a lot of heavy literary qualities here, uh, but I'm sure we can find some. So let's talk about the three best things about this. Uh, this is an entirely unique novel. Uh, now, you may say the whole speaking with the dead thing is not very unique, uh, but the approach that Koontz takes with this seems to be very unique to uh, from what I've read so far. Um, trying to think of a good way to put this here. This is uh, usually sold alongside Stephen King in the horror section, and there are some horror elements here. There's uh, some fear of the unknown, some fear of the dead, uh, some creatures, which could be considered uh, just prime candidates for the horror genre. But this isn't exactly horror, in my opinion. This reads more like a mystery, uh, a fun mystery with some dark elements. Uh, so it is really unique, as in it does kind of bend genres there. Uh, being pop-lit, uh, this does read very fast. Uh, now, I'm sure I'm going to get grief for calling it pop-lit, but hey, I'm okay with that. Uh, this is what I like to say, you know, you can sit down and you can just pick it up, you can read it. Uh, you could read this in probably one, two sittings. This is a very quick read. Uh, this is your airport book. This is what you pick up for your flight because you want something quick, light and read, something enjoyable. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, reading for enjoyment is what got, I, I would argue, every one of us into reading. Uh, so every now and then it is very nice just kind of shut off the literary blinders and enjoy uh, a book. Uh, and the third best thing is the ending of this novel. I don't want to really give it away because I would like to hope that everyone is going to go out and read it. We're not doing a heavy literary analysis here so we can avoid that. Uh, but I would say the ending of this is just gold. Uh, unexpected, a good gut punch, uh, and very enjoyable. I, it makes it hard for me to say I want to read the sequel to this. I have not read the sequel. This is all I've read. Um, but I would like to see how it plays out. Anyway, three bad things. Uh, there's not a lot of heavy literature going on here. We've talked a little bit about how this is what I like to consider pop fiction, uh, and that's fine. You can find literary elements in anything, but you're not going to be beat over the head with them in this piece. Uh, some bits, like Elvis Presley in this, seem very forced and not necessary. I mentioned earlier how Dean Koontz sometimes seems a little try-hard, especially when he's going for humor. Uh, the whole Elvis Presley thing is unique to the character, and uh, it is quirky and kind of cute, but a little overdone, unnecessary, 
he rides around with Elvis. Elvis hangs out with him. Uh, yeah, I get it. I, I don't need it. It's not necessary to the novel. Uh, and finally, uh, this probably isn't going to be a book that's going to change your life. Uh, every now and then, you come across a book that once you finish reading it, uh, it just seems like a, a, a beautiful, euphoric moment. The Great Gatsby was one for me this year. I just absolutely loved that novel and was so disappointed that I've never read it. Uh, Odd Thomas, probably not going to be that for you. And if it is, hey, that's great, but I, I'm going to call it like I see it and say you're probably not going to have that. Uh, so let's talk about a few literary elements in Dean Koontz's Odd Thomas. Uh, this is a blending of fantasy and realism, and I talked about that a little bit with the uh, horror elements of this, uh, but the ending few chapters, uh, we're dealing again with the high fantasy of the fact that he can speak to the dead and all of this, uh, but the realism surrounding the events that he's dealing with uh, do feel real. Uh, and therefore, you're able to completely suspend your disbelief for this character and just kind of go along with the story. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, and like I said, apparently this is all I took notes on. Uh, the ending of this will catch you off guard, thanks to the writing. Um, Dean Koontz is a very whimsical writer, if that makes sense. Uh, I, I didn't expect this ending coming. Uh, it was very serious. It was very real. Uh, and there was a lot that could be read into with that. Uh, I would absolutely say that the ending of this novel is the best portion of this novel by a landslide. Uh, and this deals with the question of life after death, which always seems to be something that in literature we can focus on and tackle from time to time. Uh, but this takes a very different, unique spin on this, where uh, although the dead are still wandering amongst us, they're unable to communicate with us. Uh, so, very interesting take on life after death, death with this. Uh, I'm, I'm still not really sure how I feel about it. it like I said, it, it still seems very whimsical pop fiction. Sorry, Dean. Uh, questions for further discussion. What will Odd do next? Now, like I mentioned before, this is the first book of a series. Uh, so, I, I think there's like six, seven Odd Thomas books after this. I'm not quite sure. I should have looked that up. Uh, but this does set you up for the serial novel of, oh, what's going to happen next? Uh, and it did actually catch me and interest me because the ending is so different from the rest of the book that I was really genuinely interested. I'm like, well, this would be really kind of interesting to see where he goes with this. Uh, maybe this would be much like Stephen King's The Gunslinger, where I thought it was absolutely terrible, but people were like, hey, read the next one. <laughs> it gets so much better. Uh, another question to think about, is there more behind Odd Thomas's powers that we don't know of? Now, I would imagine as the series progresses and the character develops, we're going to find out a little bit more about him, how he came to these powers, uh, is there more that he is able to do, uh, and that would be very interesting to find out. And finally, uh, what to make of the ending? Now, let me give you the last line here. This shouldn't spoil the ending for you. Oh, if I can find it very quick. There's a prelude to another novel. My name is Odd Thomas. I am a fry cook. I lead an unusual life here in my Pico Mundo. My little world. I am at peace. Now, when a character who is unreliable by nature, who claims that he is unreliable and claims that he is a lunatic, says that I am at peace, I am inclined to doubt that. Uh, so maybe that is the setup to the next novel in the series, but I, I do enjoy that. And I think there's a lot that can be interpreted from uh, the character in this novel saying that I am at peace. I'm not sure if I believe you, Odd. Uh, finally, let's recommend some books here. If you do read Odd Thomas and you do enjoy Odd Thomas, uh, obviously you should look into reading the other Odd Thomas novels. Uh, if you enjoy a series, hey, get into it. I have said many, many times... Uh, that my secret obsession is trashy science fiction. Uh, <laughs> some people like Harlequin romance. Uh, you give me those cheap mass market science fiction books, I'll eat them up. Uh, but if you like the series, read the series. If you're enjoying it, that's all that really matters. I would also suggest Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Now, this is a different take on life after death. 
uh, a lot more uh, enveloped in the horror genre than Odd Thomas. Uh, but I think if you were really interested in the life after death aspect and you wanted a different take on that that wasn't like zombie fiction, vampire fiction, something like that, highly suggest Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. And finally, um, Adrian isn't here, so I can get away with saying this. <laughs> I'm not a fan of this novel by any means whatsoever. Uh, but if you are looking for something that seems to be immensely popular in the world of literature, uh, that I would consider very easy to just pick up and read, much like this, Da Vinci Code, Dan Brown. There you go. Uh, finally, a rating for Dean Koontz's Odd Thomas. Like I said, this was not a life-changing novel uh, by any means, but it was enjoyable to sit back and read, and kind of read, uh, again, without that uh, vision of literary fiction going. Uh, I give it an 81 I think that's very reasonable, uh, enjoyable, uh, might be for some people as compared to me, not so much, but why not read it? If you're enjoying things like this, uh, read for enjoyment, that's a huge thing. So if you like this kind of thing, like I said, we're going to be doing quickies all throughout this week. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Give this video a like as well. We always appreciate it. And if you could, make sure you follow us on social media. We are at Strip Cover on Twitter and Strip Cover Lit on Facebook.